Okay, where do you want us, guys? Outside, inside? Uh, outside would be fine. If you just want to spread out, save. Yep. Okay, guys, you are here. And if you'll look up above you, you'll see uh, some of the stuff that you're going to be looking at. If anybody touches one of those ships, you will answer to the escort squad. Do not bump or touch any of those ships, or you will be potted right here, express back. Uh, guys, it's your show. Go ahead. Turning it over to you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, as you can see, unfortunately, uh, I did have an avatar lined up, but it's been called away to deployment. Same with uh, some of the supers. Uh, if you just want to spread out... So you're not such an easy target. Yep, everybody deploy yourself around a little bit. Stay out of the bubble, if you will, please. But you can uh, move around a little bit so if somebody comes in, we're not uh, we're not all getting smacked at once. If somebody posts the system in fleet. Yep, we'll do. You won't be able to get into the post, so don't even try. Thanks, Rich. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the, uh, as far as I'm aware, first class of uh, Supers and Titans. Um. I'm Rich DK, I'm from uh, Merclaris Inc, or Mink, from Razor Alliance, uh, Zero Zero Holding Sovereignty Alliance. Uh, we have a array of titans for you here. Um, first thing I want to talk about is different types of titans, because there's only one per race. Like uh, every other ship class in the game, you get different ones per race. You can quite obviously see that they're different races. Um, Victor Mason at the bottom is a Ragnarok. He's a shield danked uh, Titan. And you've got Gus, which is in the Erebus, which is the Galente one. And at the top you have uh, Shandor, which is the Leviathan. Yeah, some would say the Rag is the best, some wouldn't, depending what angle you look at. There's also only, uh, unfortunately, only two supers that I could get my hands on today, which is the Nyx, which is the Galente class, and the uh, Aeon, which is the uh, Amar class. It's also the Wyvern, if Don can link the Wyvern and the Hell, that'd be fantastic. Uh, well, uh, all the links will be done in lecture.e and is on my fleet with you guys. Roger. Uh, and you want to go ahead and link Avatar as well? Yep, you can link the Avatar. The Wyvern is the uh, Kaldari class, it's uh, shield tanked, and the Hell is also shield tanked, which is the Mimitar. Both the Aeon and the Nyx are both uh, armor tanked, same with the Erebus and the Avatar. Now there's a... There's a big dispute of which Titan's the best, which isn't. They each have their own flaws, each has their own pluses, I would say. Um, the EHP of a Titan, the estimated HP of a Titan, have uh, about the same HP as a POS, really. An untanked POS. You're looking at, before the patch, 60 plus EHP for some of them. This is in millions, by the way. Uh, shield caps are not always... Uh, Primary first. Can I get an invite to this Eve Uni channel, please? Yep, I'm trying to do that right now. I'm feeling a little left out. Okay, and then I'm also going to kind of be talking here, I guess. I'm Velocis from Mercalis Inc. as well. I saw my uh, backup speaker, in case I forget anything. Sidekick. <laughs> He's one of my uh, senior executives in court. Um, you do... I hope everyone knows how to tank a ship, but there is a uh, active tank and passive tank in game. All supers are pa passive tanked. You don't have any active reppers on there, no capital reppers or capital armor reppers, shield boosters, that type of thing. Because the, sorry, the sheer amount of EHP of a uh, Titan makes a repper and the, the slot that it make, uh, uses for that repper completely null. There's no point having that. As an example, um, I'm currently sitting in an Aeon, and I have right under half a million armor hit points, physically half a million armor hit points, and a capital repper only gives you 10,000 back at a time. It's absolutely pointless to waste your cap running something continuously like that to get that little of amount of your armor back. Um, the EHP of uh, different races of... Titan and Super Cap varies. Um, a lot of people say that the uh, Mimitar ones are the lowest. They are, unfortunately, at the moment. But after the patch, I'm pretty sure that will change. The highest tanking ones are the MR because of the uh, bonus to resistance on the Aeon. It can have an EHP of 80 million plus. But to put that in perspective, a fully tanked fleet bonus uh, Titan, uh, sorry, battleship, 
can get an EHP of about 200,000 when an Aeon has 80 million. You can see the difference in uh, size of tank on these things. So we'll say in a large-scale fleet battle where we've got many Titans engaging many super carriers, even with the large-scale tanks that they do have, they sometimes die relatively quickly just because the pure, sheer amount of DPS that these ships put out. Yeah, DPS and damage sites will come into a bit later. Um, in a high lag situation, uh, shield supers do come into sort of their own because the massive passive tank that you have on a shield super is around between 3,000 to 5,000 DPS per second. And in high lag situations when a lot of damage is void by lag, you can pretty much tank entire fleets with them. So to come to a question that was asked earlier that shield supers get primary first. In high lag situations with large fleets, they're primary last, I would say. If you want to do maximum damage to a uh, super fleet, you would attack um, the Erebus first because the bonus it gives to uh, fleet's armor. Uh, each different race gives a different bonus, um, generally to that specific race. So a Kaldari will give a bonus to uh, shields at Titan level 5. A Le- Leviathan will give a 37.5% bonus to your shield. Same with the Erebus and their armor. While the Ragnarok has a pretty rubbish bonus, to be honest, which is only to signature radius, which only helps in Ahak fleets as far as I'm aware. And the Avatar gives a bonus to people's cap. Um, DPS comes on supers is from its fire bombers and fighters. Before the patch, you can also launch normal drones. After the patch, you won't be able to launch normal drones. So you'll be limited to either fighters or fire bombers, depending on the super. Let me look up how many that'll be. I believe it's 25 fighters and fighter bombers in Aeons and Wyverns, and then it'll be 30 uh, fighters and fighter bombers in Nixes and Hells. Yeah. The bonus is on a, a Nix. It's for damage. The bonus on an Aeon is for tank. Same with the Wyvern is for tank. And for uh, a Hell, it's for repping bonus. Again, Mimitar got the short end of the stick. If um, anybody in Eve Uni wants to, uh, that Eve Uni chat... The question's popping up. I'm not in there yet. So if anybody oh, wants sorry. to ask them directly. Oh, okay. okay, I'm reading and I can answer some of those. So say a couple people were talking in here. Um, let me go up here. You know, one guy said, you know, why are we running our armor and shields at this current time? Number one rule of a Titan and a super carrier. Each one of these is worth the... Uh, each one of these super carriers in here is worth a thousand US dollars and the Titans are worth over closer to three thousand US dollars, three to four thousand. Uh, an investment this large, you always protect it. That's number one. And then yes, these, there are some people that will occasionally use some of these ships as a, quote, ratting or as a uh, PVE, um, but they are primarily for PVP exercises only. Um, each race has, uh, of Titan has the, a bonus to the race specific damage, uh, or weapon. So Erebus would be hybrids, Leviathan, torpedoes and cruise missiles, Ragnarok is uh, projectiles, and Erebus, uh, sorry, the Avatar is lasers, obviously. The damage of a fully skilled Titan pilot can range anywhere of 10,000 plus damage per second. Another, the big advantage of the Titans in a capital fight is their doomsday, which they pretty much, it's a one shot, one kill for capitals. Um, at different damages, each Titan does different damages. The Ragnarok does the explosive damage doomsday, which is epic. Uh, the Erebus is kinetic, or no, it's thermal. The Leviathan is the kinetic one, and the Avatar is the EM damage. So, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's low sec. They're kind of, we can't doomsday in low sec. It's a bit like uh, bombs and uh, bubbles. You can't use them in low sec, so I apologize for that. Okay, someone just asked, um, typical Titan fleet made of, generally you'll have, number one, as many Titans as you can get, uh, then probably um, as many super carriers as you can get, number one. Then in that fleet, you would just keep um, carriers and dreadnoughts, other capital ship, and as many of them as you could get, maxed fleet. Support ships like your battle cruisers, battleships, stuff like that, all those go in secondary and tertiary fleets, and you have as many of them as possible. 
because especially after the patch, supers and titans won't be able to log off and get out of an engagement area. They will, once they're committed, they are committed. They either die or they escape, and it's going to be extremely hard to, the only way to get them out of a combat engagement is going to be for a sub-capital fleet to rescue them. Just so everyone understands, you cannot dock these ships. They are, they are too big to dock, so there's no one docking for them. They live in posses like this one, and they have either a sitting alt, which is an alt just skilled enough to sit in it, which you then trade out for your combat pilot, which then fights in it, or you have a living ult, which a lot of these titans, I think, have, um, which is a, an ult specifically designed just to fly these ships. They are generally high-skilled uh, pilots. I know the one in the rag has 135 million skill points. He is very skilled at what he does. Same with supers, living ults, or sitting ults. Yes, when you exit the game, it warps off and then disappears. Sometimes it takes so long to warp, it will disappear in the boss. Yeah, about As- that. The, these ships, they take every day. You know, I mean, it's like warping a battleship. You know, the difference between a shuttle and a battleship. These ships have masses 10 to, I don't even know how many times more than battleships. It takes, you know almost a minute for us to warp around system to system. Their yeah, warps are very slow. We're talking 0.3 AU per second. Yeah, never bump a friendly Titan Super. I've seen people deliberately bump them and get doomsday for it. So if you're ever in a 0-0 alliance, keep it range from these things. Yeah, that happened to me once. Yeah, uh, we can gen- warp around the system. The general way of getting these ships around is to jump from system to system, like any other regular cap. But due to their size and their weight, their jump ranges are very limited. Um, the supers are generally um, about half the range of a, uh, a general carrier, and a Titan is uh, three times less than a carrier, which has the longest jump range. Um, uh, you can bump a Titan, but you can't stop it from warping. It will have warp eventually. Sheer mass of them makes them very hard to bump. You need a good 10, 15 ships to actually bump them out of a POS. Or bump them off their uh, alignment. Um, for a zero zero alliance that has a lot of uh, Super and Titans, they're very easy to move around. You know how to do it, so it becomes generally easy. Post bowling is a an old concept. It, you can't do it now. If you walk to a post at zero, you'll end up fifteen k away from the shields. Oh, that's a good one. Um, these ships, there. Um, some of the alliances, uh, or some of the alliances do have. Corp Titans or Alliance wide Titans that the Alliance or the Corp they own it. Most of these ships are actually individually owned by the pilots that fly them. Where if they die, then the Alliance will quote assist in replacing it. Yeah. The Ragnarok you see at the post at the moment is uh Corp owned by Mink. Uh the Erebus and the Le- Levy are personally owned along with all the Supers. A dedicated tune to fly a super camp, um, it generally takes about two to three years to get that trained fully and completely. Now, yes, you can sit in it and fly it kind of well after about a year and a half. Now, at the skills that you really want to be flying a super camp at, because of the fact they are so expensive, uh, you end up spending three years skilling that account. Um the price, um, sorry, Lessie, your uh, question is, how, um, do you manufacture them? We do manufacture them. We also buy them. Uh, depends on the person. Are they willing to wait? Are they willing to pay the extra money to buy it? So, uh, the price of trip for us, for an X is around 950 million units to build them. Yeah, if you want to do it at some point, I would start an alt now. Yeah. Uh, a sitting alt, which is a babysitting alt. Only takes about six months for an alt to uh, to fly it constantly, like everyone has here, is uh, a couple of years. How much is for building a super? About ten and a half billion. A uh, Titan, you're looking at forty plus. Uh, the BPOs come from uh, NPC corps in high sec. Um, with vets flying them and stuff like that, that's not always true because I don't consider myself a vet, and I. I've been, I guess I've been a game for three years, and compared to a lot of pilots around us, or a lot of pilots in the game, that's nothing. But yet, I've got, um, I'm actually having my Titan is being built uh, at this moment. Um, you can buy Titan characters, yep, you can buy them from the forums, but they do cost 
a hell of a lot of money. Subcaps, oh god, yeah. The biggest threat to super is subcaps. Um, you get a good fleet of 200 uh, hurricanes come at you, like the goons do. You're dead. Hurricanes. Okay. Uh, to build, supers, about 12 days for the parts, and uh, about 21 to 23 days for uh, the actual ship. A Titan from start to comes out of the cooker will be th- almost three to four months. Yep. It takes about a month to build the parts, and then it takes uh, 20... No, it takes uh, 12 and a half weeks to build it. Uh, Mink has uh, Titan pilots. Actually, can sit in a Titan and fly it. We have, oh God, about 15 people. Actual Titans. We, uh, Mink only has one. Alliance-wide, uh, it's a closely guarded secret of how many you actually got uh, to each corp. So I can't exactly give you a percentage. Titans use bridging all the time. Uh, hot drops, a lot of Alliances use them all the time. Big supercap fleets happen probably every couple of weeks and stuff like that. I wouldn't go every couple of weeks. M- major scale super capital battles where we have super caps on super caps, those happen maybe three to four times a year. Where we have super caps engaging something else, that happens quite regularly now that alliances have quite a few. Um, but the problem is, many alliances, it's very hard to gauge whether or not you want to put your super caps on a fight with the other's enemies. You're both trying to wait for the opportune moment to do something that large. Um, with the expansion, dreads will be used again. I'm hoping so, because I have a dread uh, along with my super. So, But the shortened cycle time on the siege, coupled with the massive bonus to damage they're getting, I would probably see larger f- dread fleets going up against super fleets, coupled with super fleets and stuff like this. Losing a Titan uh, is very bad, yes, because they cost so much, but to be honest, it's not something we go home crying about. Every now and then, um, when an alliance does a large-scale move, um, pilots that own supercaps and titans will pack a lot of their ships into their supercaps and titans because of the fact they can hold a massive amount of stuff and then move them to staging system and then unload. But now, like, I need to move this item from here to here. No. You know, it is only moved from system to staging system when absolutely necessary. Not really. It's really big orcas. I mean, if orcas had giant guns that could insta-pop almost anything, yeah, but no. They do have a massive cargo bay in them, but they're practically like a station. Yeah, if you can't afford to replace it, don't fly. Um, the supers uh, use fire bombers for their damage, which essentially fire Sissel torpedoes at the um, at the enemy. They're not like uh, regular drones. Um, they orbit a much higher uh, distance from the target, and they're much tougher than normal drones to kill, so you can't just smart bomb them off. Supers can change fittings as long as they have either another super or a carrier next to them, or they're at a ship maintenance array on a POS. No, other players can't dock at them. A Titan 1v1, um, that would take an extremely long time, uh, but I wouldn't say days, probably hours, just because of the fact every 10 minutes it's a doomsday, that you can doomsday uh, the other Titan. And that each doomsday, a fully skilled doomsday does, Rich, you may have to correct me on this, I believe it's close, It's th- is it 3 million damage? Fully skilled is close to 4 million damage to a single target. It will insta-pop uh, dreads and carriers and anything under that. No, you can't tank it. The only thing that can take that are other supers and titans. Even then, if you get a large amount, of, uh, yeah, a large enough amount of titans, you can doomsday off supers. Speed tanking won't work. If you if they can target you, they can kill you. Okay, I'm going back up a little bit, but someone was asking if uh, about. I did say battleships and battle cruisers. Um, as a support fleet for a capital fight, uh, yes, generally there are T2 cruisers in there all the time as well. Those support fleets range from anything and everything. It takes roughly about 17 doomsdays to uh, doomsday a uh, hell, which is the lowest tanking super. Uh, it goes up significantly for the uh, Aeon. Uh, how long does it take to target a shuttle? About a minute and a half, so you can easily get away. Uh, you can't or e-warp. Uh, E-War, Super Caps, or Titans, they are immune to any form of E-War. Uh, the only way to pin them down is to either use a Hick or a Dicta with their bubbles. The range of a Doomsday is uh, 
as far as the grid can go. Um, new pilots are useful in any fleets, uh, depending on your attitude towards the fleet. If you have a bomber, you can you can use scouts, warpins, you know, stuff like that. You know, recons, battleships, they're all useful in all types of fleets. Just as a super capital or a titan has specific reasons to be in a fleet and to be used with a fleet, every ship in the game, all the way down to a rifter, has a specific purpose that it can do extremely well and is needed in almost, in, you know, every fleet. Uh, best triage, I would say uh, Archon. Not really part of this lecture, but triage Archon. Uh, you generally, generally run fleets of supers with uh, normal capitals. Uh, after the patch, um, dreads will become much more useful as a higher damage dealer, as you can get roughly about the same damage as a super with them after the patch. Carriers, you jump a bunch of triage carriers in to save a, a tackled super or titan, it might actually save it. And it's well worth the cost. Uh, Jacob, do you have a, a yeah. fit there you can link? Yeah, here, I'll just link. I'll link the Aeon. I'll link the, uh, the other thing. <laughs> Titan. Uh, oh shoot, yeah. All carriers are useful. Um, Mimitar carrier is especially useful because it's rep bonus. Um, after the patch, it'll become even more useful because it's getting a bonus to its cap and its rep bonus. So, in fleets with supers and titans, to save you know to save each other, that rep bonus would be uh, very useful. I want to actually talk about this fit a little bit as I link it. So, there's uh, Jasmine linked, which is the Aeon I'm currently sitting in. Now, part of the reason why these ships are so expensive is those modules on it are ridiculously expensive. There's almost 2 billion esque worth of rigs on it and almost 4 billion esque worth of low slot modules equipped to this ship at the moment. Those modules give this thing the highest tank that it possibly can. Um, and right now I'm sitting at my lowest resist is a 90% on the explosive with my highest resist being a 94% EM damage. Uh, the post is an arm so you don't get shot, that's why. But yeah, the fittings on these, um, Especially if you're going officer, uh, officer fit on the Titans, you can, you can have your own weight, uh, worth actually fitted to the ship as the ship. Uh, Aeon's role is the same as the others, just pure damage, um, supers, not much useful other than damage. Oh, and someone asked why a cloaking device? Um, currently the cloaking device is on here because I moved it into system, uh, the other day. Um, anytime you move your super cap, uh, you always have a cloak on it because worst case scenario, warp somewhere in cloak. Best case scenario, nothing happens. Um, in a large scale fleet battle, I would have a capital armor, remote armor repper equipped to that, or another smart bomb, or another newt, which are all in my hangar that I have inside the ship. I have about three different fittings for this ship. The change to the drone bay on the super is going to have a massive effect on their usefulness. Uh, at the moment, you can drop them in. Uh, you know, you can drop 100 in, take out a subcap fleet. Um, after the patch, you will have no way to defend yourself from subcap fleets effectively. Uh, battleships, you still be able to use fighters on them, but it, they won't be as effective. So you can no longer drop, you know, 20 um, sentries or heavy drones or medium drones and take out a subcap fleet. Uh, and someone asked the guards and guard twos, guard ones and guard twos. That's a very good point. Um, at this point that we can actually use regular drones, you use supers, we use supers with dreadnought and carrier fleets when we're shooting towers. And um, because these ships are extremely slow, they move, you are looking at slower than your freighter by about half speed. Um, so if I get bumped, sinoing in, warping around, or accidentally move, 20 T2 Sentry drones will cost me um, almost 30 million. And if I'm reinforcing four towers in a day and I lose four sets, there's a little too much money for me to waste just randomly left in space. So you use the Tech 1 to reinforce bosses and uh, Tech 2 to fight with. Because when you're fighting, you throw everything at them, as much money as you can. It doesn't matter if you lose it. Uh, sub, subcap fleets will uh, become very useful and uh, really important, even more so after the patch for taking these type of ships out. Um, Jacob linked a fit uh, there. What it doesn't show is the uh, implants in in the uh, character's head. Uh, pretty much all these characters are flying around with slave sets in, 
for extra bonus, it gives you an extra 30% on your armor, which is a massive bonus to a ship like these. You're talking going from 50 million HP to uh, 80 million on the Aeon. That, there's also a lot of other hard wirings in. It's very common for a pilot to have um, 3 to 4 billion plugged into his head when you're flying these things around. Uh, Lana, I have actually lost a super. I lost one to a hot drop as I was returning home after an op. And I lost my Nyx. Um, I still won't hesitate to fly my ship into any sort of combat, as long as I trust the FC. And you probably will see bigger and bigger Titan blobs as uh, the years go by. That's the problem in EVE. More people join, more people on Titans. Not enough are being killed to uh, against the mountain that's being built. Uh, Titans got hit with the nerf bat in the next patch as well. They are losing the ability to doomsday subcaps. And they're losing their drone bay. So, again, they're going to be very vulnerable to subcap fleets. I God hope they don't release a Tech 2 Titan. Um, uh, the, spe- the special modules that you can fit to these ships, um, the Titan has two. Uh, obviously, the Doomsday, but it also has a, a jump portal, which can bridge subcap fleets. Well, it can bridge any ship that doesn't have a jump drive to a Sino. So you can move fleets of subcaps with... Your uh, jump while well, while you're jumping around with your supers and titans, which makes them absolutely epic. <laughs> the insurance on these things is terrible. I think it's like one and a half billion for a titan and uh, uh, about eight hundred million for a super. And you're correct. The Black Ops can fit a jump portal. That is a covert jump portal. The standard jump portal goes only on the titans. Um, the special module that fits to the super is a. Uh, a remote UCM burst. It's a targeted module that allows you to jam anything within range of anything you shoot it at. So you you shoot it from the super to a target. That target is jammed. And then anything within 25k of the target you just jammed is then jammed. So you can create bubble effects around the field with uh, jammed ships. But the thing is, you only lose your lock. You don't actually get jammed like normal jammers. So you can instantly relock, but to be honest, that split second can be, be the meaning of life and death in some of these ships. Yeah, it could be the chance for you to jump them out, can't it? Yeah. Yes. A good, um, as the patch is right now, or as the server is right now, a good super cat pilot that really knows what he's doing in low sec should be able to get away from um, two to three hicks. Out in zero, you're almost stuck just because of dictors with their bubbles. Um, you may get a lucky and be able to smart bomb their um, interdiction bubbles, uh, but using the proper use of the burst ECM, your newts, and your jam drones can, you know, can and has saved many super caps uh, from death. Yeah, um, sub caps I would use to counter um, or jump in a majority. Uh, or- of the rest of the supers I had available. If you can, uh, as it stands before the patch, if you jump in enough, you can kill off a subcap fleet. So you either shout at your alliance to log on all the supers and titans and get them in, you know, jump them in, or you quickly gather up a subcap fleet for defense. If they want to escalate with their own supers, then you've got a supercap fight on your hand. And that, um, situations like that, I think there's been, I want to say two, well, three, counting the maybe four major escalations this year. There was one uh, that was a uh, no. There's been a couple because Gyp- I'm sorry, I forgot all about the Gypsy Band. Gypsy Band has escalated Red Alliance several times and got s- several Titans on several engagements. There was a AAA escalation this year, and then while the North was falling, there was the escalations of O2O. There was two of those, and then there was an escalation in Uamon. Those super capital fights. You know, many of you may have been in sub-capital fights, and I say a sub-capital fight, a battleship, battle cruiser, whatever, engagements, and those go by, snap your fingers, and it's done. I was actually in both UAMON and O2O, and the time from the time we were called to launch fighter bombers to the time we were told to evac jump out was close to eight hours. Are we on call 24 hours a day? Uh, that is relatively close. 
there are many people in this alliance that have my phone number that are to call me uh, when shit goes down. And the same thing, we get Jabber Pings, which is a program that pretty much pings us that says there's a fight ongoing. Um, if Now, there's another, well, at the moment, if you're... If someone would say, shoot this pause, number one, it's low sec, they can't anchor bubbles, we would just move pauses and get out of it. Um, in some situations, uh, as an example, um, in three, we actually had to log off our super capitals in a fight, which I know you won't, we won't be able to do um, after the patch. When we logged off, when we logged back in, we were sitting in a bubble, they had bubbled the entire area. So many of us did not log in for three to four weeks on those accounts, used alts to go about removing those bubbles, and then after downtime, logged in and jumped them out right as buttons hit downtime. Um, we had our supers stuck in 3G for three and a half weeks before we were able to move them out safely. And even then, the moment I logged in, they jumped in a super cap fleet trying to catch me. But I managed to jump out. So it's a very uh, tricky business. They're very vulnerable ships, but on the other hand, they're very useful, exciting, and adrenaline-pumping ships when you get the right uh, sort of action. Do you, do you ever tell your boss that uh, Internet spaceships are more important than work? No, I haven't had to do that yet, but I have went into work without sleeping at all. Uh, the salvage and loot normally goes to the Alliance. Um all the faction mods go to the alliance to be sold and goes back into the super cap replacement fund and you know, to pay for the supers we may have lost in that fight. Uh, the salvage on them, you need salvage five to salvage a super. We'd take two salvages and even then it takes a long time and you, but you get like thousands of tech two parts out of it. FCs use yeah. the slide titans. Yeah. Um, generally they have their own titan alts. I will also say that generally as an FC flying a Titan, if you are an FC flying a Titan, prepare to lose your Titan many times over. Um, one of the FCs up north uh, flew in Erebus. His name was Country. He lost, I believe, three or four Titans um, in super capital engagements because we would land it, we would load grid, and we would know Country's the FC, kill his Titan first. It takes about 30 seconds to get to warp. From a standing still, and they are like uh, they are like aircraft carriers in real life. Keeping a spare Titan is generally very hard because of the fact you have to have a tomb to sit in it, or it just floats in outer space. Now, f- having a Titan float in outer space is, you know, it's just not a safe thing to do um, because it's easy to just go in, bubble the ta- bubble the pause, and reinforce it and stuff like that. So generally, we do- we won't necessarily have them ready but we will have uh quote components ready build it so after losing a titan we can just throw all the components in to build a new one um if we lose a titan mm, the corporate alliance don't really have to tighten up and grind us for it so to say we have a we have enough um you can't be my accountant <laughs> Truth be said, a lot of Titan pilots that um, and supercarrier pilots, uh, all depending on their age, don't necessarily have near as much money as you'd think because they have way too much money wrapped up in their supercarriers. Um, business to get to that sort of money. Um, a lot of pilots um, are very maybe older pilots, you know, talking three, four years old, and have a lot of old disc, uh, is what we call it where they can pull a lot of their assets, sell a lot of their assets, uh, you know, pull in all those loans that they've given out and pull in a large amount of cash for that, for their time. I know it may sound ridiculous. Your level four missions, pick it all up, stack it up, stack it up, stack it up, and then two years down the road, go to sell it, and you will be surprised how much ISK they'll be there. Um, at the moment, our supers are being used to grind Sovereignty and Delve. We attack in iHubs, uh, TCUs, stations, that sort of stuff, where the, the sheer amount of damage that these uh, ships do can grind through the massive amount of HP on these structures very quickly. Um, we do use them in combat uh, to back up subcat fleets. Generally, we're jumping the subcat fleet first, make sure that we can actually win. And then, or close to winning, and jump in the supers to back them up, you know, push them over the edge, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, well, first of all, joining Razor or any other alliance, uh, it's 
not like joining a regular high set corp. It takes a little bit more, what do I want to say, there's a lot more background checks because unfortunately I'm sure all you guys know there are a lot of spies and a lot of stuff like that that does happen. Um, but it's more or less just going to talk to the individual corpse and getting that rolling. A lot of corpse do have an SP limit, um, that you have to meet. And, um, there's someone changing tunes. I will say I know this from experience because I had to do it quite regularly when I had my wyvern. The more or less you are just ejecting from your ship and voiding it as quick as you possibly can because there's that few seconds where you can pretty much, someone could walk up and steal your super. Um, generally, you do that, like I would not do that right here, just because singularity is close enough to my ship. You, where no one's around, you do it very far away from everybody else, if there are other pilots in the pause with you. Because it, uh, anybody within 10k of the ship can board the ship, so you obviously you stay 15k away from everybody when you do that. And it generally takes about... Four seconds. <laughs> Show you that there are titans out pew pewing. Um, actually, these titans are up here for logistical purposes. Um, and probably will be moved down to fight once they're uh, once we're done. Um, Sinos. Um, what happens is one character in the system you want to go to um, lights the Sino, which is then visible by anybody in your fleet. And then you right-click your ship or capacitor, go jump to, and it will jump to that Sino. Um, Titans only have a range of uh, four light years at basic skills, while they have, uh, I think it's about seven and a half at uh, max skills. So you can't jump anywhere. There is a limit. Yeah, if you move to zero, zero, you love your logistical pilots. They keep you going. And moving supers at a high sec, uh, well, that's just all carriers in general. I mean, part of it is, yes, it was a logist, it was an amazing logistical feat being able to light a sino on, sino on G station and jump, jump freighters in. But the, um, the fact that, uh, more experienced players could just run around in high sec, like I could run around in a war deck, with this Aeon and kill people is definitely a little bit overpowered. They need to have some restrictions on them as the fighters and fighter bombers only restriction is coming to it and stuff like that. Those restrictions, pilots that have them now may not like, but it's necessary for the EVE community to continue to grow as it is. Oh, the other thing, I guess I'm looking over notes here and uh, the... Look, I know we talked a little bit about building supers and how much it costs to build that. What is funny or more ridiculous is the is the because of the fact you have to have soft and the time requirements to build these things you can sell these ships for an extremely high price uh, a standard super capital off the market right now is going at about 15 to 16 billion and that's actually quite low considering uh, about three months ago they were going for almost 18 to 19 billion Titans nowadays are actually down I believe to about 80 or no, they're, they're between 75 and 80 billion, all depending on which Titan you're looking at, um, where they were up in the 90s a few months ago. Obviously, the changes to them have got several people selling theirs, flooding the market. Uh, to produce a Titan and Super, Supers are around about 10.5 billion build cost, and Titans are around uh, 43 to 45 billion build cost. And you can sell them for a good amount of profit. Titans are selling for 75 plus, depending on what type. And Supers are selling for, like Jacob just said, 15, uh, 14 to 16 billion, depending on type. I don't know how many people uh, crew the, the Titans. And Razor is very Dreadnought heavy, so we're going to be using a lot of them in the, uh, in the winter expansion. Um, a lot of the Dreadnought skills are used in the Titan, so if you skill for a Dreadnought, it only, it doesn't take that long to get into a Titan. The long skills, or well, Capital Ships 5, there are several skills that do take a long time, but pretty much every skill you train for a Dreadnought was extremely necessary for the Titan. Um, jump bridging. I'm actually going to bridge you guys back to high sec. I think that's the plan. Um, yep. It's uh, simple. You just uh, get in range of the Titan, right-click it, jump to, like a Stargate. Only get to see this massive, epically large, cool bubble effect fly out of the Titan. The um, the jumping of Titans, it's all done um, th primarily through your capacitor. Right-click, jump to. 
Um, I know that's not very descriptive, but there's not much of a way to, to show it. And it pretty much, it's just like jumping a gate, uh, only instead of uh, going one system over, you're going quite a few systems over, and it's all done through the capacitor instead of clicking on the gate. Even the effect of when you leave system and getting in another system is the same effect at the moment. I know they're changing that effect just to make it look cooler. They have become too common. Uh, when I first joined Zero Zero uh, many years ago, uh, t- a Titan was a big thing. It was an alliance-wide operation to get the minerals, to build one, and you know, get the sovereignty and stuff like this. Um, nowadays, I think they're far too common. Um, we're actually going to bridge you. Well, I'm actually going to bridge you to uh, the gate right next to high sec. As you can't light signers in high sec. Uh, how much tra- X training do you need to super carry for fly carrier? Uh, for a carrier, you need carrier level three and fighters level one. For a super, you need at least fighter bombers one, which requires fighters five and carrier level three as. Uh, level 3 as well um, for mink pilots mink will not build you one at all unless you have a specific skill set which is fighter bombers 5 carrier 5 and jump cow 5 with all the support skills which those skills are all of those skills are a, I'm trying to think here f- close to a 50 day skill train 50 to 60 days you literally spend uh, 3 to 4 months knocking out just those couple skills why do I, why do I personally want to fly a super? Number one, it's, uh, it was a long time dream of mine to fly one, and they are positively the most fun I've ever had is flying one of these ships in combat. Um, I've been in quite a few, uh, large super, car- super carrier engagements. I've hot dropped battleships, and there's nothing like it. Like you, the adrenaline, adrenal oh shit, I can't talk. The adrenaline l- rush from any PvP engagement that you may feel or get is just absolutely nothing compared to even hot dropping a battle cruiser in uh, a ship this size. Just the awe dropping whoa is just, it's unexplainable. It's also a status symbol to be honest, not to sound elitist or anything. But, uh, it does also mean you've spent way too much time playing EVE and spent way too much time training specific skills to get to the point you have. It is a lot of hard work, but the payoff at the end of it is very rewarding. Like Jacob just said, the sheer adrenaline of flying these type of ships. Um, these ships can target up to 250k, so the fight can spread out across the whole group. And I've even seen Titan's Doomsday up to 400 kilometers away. I will say the battle in Uaman, um I was pretty much in the middle of it, and the farthest ship from me was close to 300 kilometers away on either side of me. It was a massive arena that we were fighting on. Um, put this much effort into a subcap ships? No, because they're a lot easier to build and they're a lot more common. We go through lots and lots of battleships. Um, how many ships can be used to bridge? You can bridge entire fleets, so... Uh, 255 people is the limit. Fuel. To, the fuel is based on the mass of the ship. So, the bigger the ship, the more it actually costs. Yeah, so it's going to cost him like about four isotopes to get us out of here. Yeah, it's not going to cost much to bridge these. <laughs> I've bridged the entire battleship fleets, you know, 255 people and spent about 70,000 isotopes. And that's another thing. The fuel base on these ships, I don't know. Oh, well, I don't have a Titan yet, so I don't know on it. But on a super carrier, the fuel bay on it's actually not that large, but the corporate hangar bay uh, that we've got in it is generally packed almost as full as it can get with isotopes because of the fact you can't dock these things, you can't refuel easily. You end up keeping 200,000 isotopes in there just because you never want to run out of fuel. You never want to be able to bail. So the lesson there is, guys, when uh, when they bridge... When a Titan, when you get ready to bridge through a Titan and they tell you to approach at a certain range and stay at that range, they mean it. And if you're in a fleet that's going into that battle, you need to do that because every time, if that, if you miss that bridge and they have to put it up for you again, they're not happy campers. That's very true. Uh, Titan's worst nightmare? Yeah, 500 hurricanes with 10 hicks. Uh, that would be a nightmare. 
It all depends on the situation. If there are many, if there's a lot of you fighting an enemy, that is, I consider that a glorious death. I would, I would gladly lose my supercarrier, my Titan, for Razor Alliance. Um, they've done a lot for me, and I will gladly lose it for that. What I would, my worst nightmare is that I lose my Titan or supercarrier um, due to a fail moment on my own part, and don't lose it in a fight. I, I want to go down kicking. I don't want to lose my Titan just by, oh, shoot, I jumped to the wrong Sino. I br- jumped instead of bridging, which is unfortunately a common mistake. Oh, I've seen that, and it is ugly when it happens. Yeah. We lost the Titan a few weeks ago because he uh, jumped instead of bridged. He did manage to doomsday a uh, jump right though. So. Yeah, but still wasn't worth it. Worth it. it. it wasn't worth the Titan. It's, it's, it's the last thing that did it. Yeah. Um, Supercat pilots are in high demand, yes, but um, Mink wouldn't just uh, allow you into Corp just because of that. You'd have Mink is the oldest Corp in Eve. Um, I've tried to find an old Corp, can't find one. Um, so we take uh, recruitment policies very seriously. So it's not just uh, of ma- it's not a matter of what you can fly or stuff like this. It's a uh, it's a matter of do you gel the corp. Other alliances are are different. They will allow anybody in. I know the goons will. <laughs> you just got to apply. I wouldn't say we're hardcore. I say we're well established. Very old. We're, prof- we're professional is the best way to look at it. Yeah, I'm in the corp. It can't be deemed hardcore. Actually, Don <laughs> came from the uh, the Eve Uni, and we're very proud with his process progress at the moment. He's one of our top PVPers. So. KG. Don's crazy enough. I almost have to run full jump freighters up of the ships that he loses. <laughs> Uni mentality, just throw it all in and see what happens. I mean, we may be old, but we're not a, We're not an elitist corp. So we do, like Don, as long as you gel with the corp, you're friendly, you know, you're know, you willing to get on comms, chat, you know, you're getting fleets, we're willing to teach you how to run zero zero. we'll help you out as much as possible. Um, if you're short on cash, we'll give you free ships, stuff like this. So... There's also an SRP system that gives you replacement ships if you're running in fleets. So uh, we have US and EU time play, uh, time zone players. If you want to join, you can join our public channel, which is just Mink, and then talk to our recruiters. But we'll help you out in as much way as possible. Someone said something about the Alliance tournament. The Alliance tournament really doesn't really matter to us. It's just a matter of oh, it's cool, whatever. You know what matters to us is you know as a corp is. I don't, you know, I don't even know how to explain it. Just succeeding, number one. Number two, keeping our pilots taken care of. And that's the same as the Alliance. The Alliance, you know, most, some Alliances, they strive for, I want to win the Alliance tournament. Where Razor, it's more or less, a lot of these big zero zero Alliances, they, what they want is they really just want a home to call their own and someone to shoot on a daily basis. I'm shooting. Gibson, do you want to uh, read that chat? Okay. Roger. Yes, doomsdays are usable only in null. Going back to the fuel business on the jump portals, the doomsday actually uses 30,000 isotopes per shot. So every 10 minutes you need 30,000 isotopes in your fuel bay to doomsday one ship. So no, we won't doomsday your shuttle because it costs more money to shoot the doomsday than your shuttle's worth. (laughs) A new player. Um, Let me think here, I'm just... Number one, I always stay open because things in this game happen that, that do absolutely are horrible and not fun at all. But the next day can be, a, you know, as epic as it gets. You know, I mean, there are bad days, there are good, get, good days. Number one, stay open to that. Number two, never stop training. Um, number three, as a combat pilot, always start training other races. Um, you know, the specific, like, I'm an Amar, Ura. Well, that doesn't do you much good, because most time, most of the time, alliances will change flying armor, shield, whatever, all the time. Uh, Razor is always demanding that we train this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill, all the time. It's always changing. So, be open to not being a Mar only. I mean, yeah, then I can sort of chime in a bit. Um, I started out as pretty much an Amar centric pilot. As soon as I joined. I had to start training for hurricanes and 
maelstroms that I could use them in the fleet, the fleet ops. As well as I could fit a shield carbine that worked in the fleets, they always wanted hurricanes. And I don't think I've replaced an armor or a Mars ship for you in, I don't know, it's been two months probably. Yeah, I think I only lost one when we were deployed in, um, probably Providence. Another tip for you uni players, um, be patient with your skills. Don't skip around from one skill to another. Train it up. Make sure you you know you can use that skill well, and then move on to the next. Just be patient with it. You know they'll come. Um, uh, Razor lost. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Razor lost a lot of players to Incarna, and a lot of people have gone inactive, unfortunately, because of CCP's fail. But a lot of them have said they you know once CCP sorts it all out, they'll come back with flying colours. We're assuming quite a bit of them are going to come back, especially with uh, all the epic changes that are happening to this next patch. Tier 3 battlecruisers, oorah! Yeah, another thing that's going to be deadly to Supers and Titans, a battlecruiser with large guns on it. Yes, a lot of people are very happy with it. A lot of people are sitting back, chilling, and just waiting for that day to come. Especially that dread buff, man. Oh yeah, it's got to be awesome. When 80% of your alliance can fly dreadnoughts... When, dread, when dreads get buffed, it's a good day. Uh, Gibson, the uh, rag pilot's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, and if you guys want to take a look at that, uh, the massively, horrendously slow progress that that rag is making right now, that's painful. No, in, in C, as whether you mean NC Dot, the Alliance, or the Old Northern Coalition. Number one, the Old Northern Coalition doesn't exist anymore. It died, unfortunately, a long time ago. Um, and NC Dot um, is actually a red entity towards us. We've had many engagements with them. Many good fights. Logi pilots. Logi, that is, a Logi and a large-scale fleet is one of the most important ships. I know a lot of Logi logistics pilots don't realize how much those of us love them, but there have been many times uh, while flying in a Baton, a Maelstrom, a Recon, or whatever, that logistics ships have saved my rear end. I once watched an Abaddon go down to about half structure, and I ended up coming out of that fleet in the Abaddon with full armor, and I made it to half structure about three times. Um, I... I'm a Logi FC, uh, the Razor calls them Logi FC. Uh, I run the logistical teams in fleets as well. So I will I'll probably be doing a lecture on Guardian scimitars and stuff like that in the future. Can uh, people keep their shells away from the rack, please? Until I say so. Guys, stay back until you're told to do something, please. Um, what is the, the rag is moving at about, what, 75 ms is about top speed, and I believe the Airbus can actually hit 77. Yeah. I'm moving about 71 and a half meters per second. That's amazing. I didn't know it would go that fast. That's pretty good. Uh, this Aeon will only cruise around at about 64. Number one, with skilling, it's always important to make sure you can fly one sh before you move on to your next ship. Now, definitely there are some class ships that you can kind of skip, such as the, well, I should say, I kind of think you can skip the Destroyer. At least I've skipped the Destroyer, and that was three years ago. Um, but now, skilling everything to level 5, does that mean getting T2 guns? Yes, T2 guns are a necessity. Now, taking specializations to 5... A little bit of overdrive, or a little bit of overkill. And, uh, yes, you can put 100 mm MWD on these bad boys, but it makes about no difference considering the fact you have about the mass of a small station. It speeds you up by about 5 ms. And the nice 500% sink boost. Not that you sink exactly small anyway. Yeah, that's, you, you don't speed tank because of the fact a Titan is a planet orbiting a star and supercarriers are pretty much moons orbiting those planets. Um, number one, uh, uh, I think Rich kind of said it, but I didn't think, he didn't emphasize on it. Supercaps are immune to E-War. You can't web it, you can't warp disrupt it besides the focused hit point from a hick or the bubble from a dictor. Um, you can't track and disrupt them, you can't, re and after the patch you won't be able to remote sensor boost them, remote tracking enhance them. You know, the only E-War you can do to a super cap is actually newt them if you want to consider, consider a newt uh, a form of E-War. You can't jam them, nothing like that. You can use a uh, hick point with the script in to tackle them, though, in low sec. You cause, you 
course, the bubbles also catch them. That's the end of the rhino. And obviously a heck and low sack with a bunch of supers, you will, if a, like, let's say for some reason a heck would have warped onto this pause, you would have seen all these titans and super carriers log off, snap your fingers, we would have been gone. Uh, super carrier pilots, watch for that and definitely, um, stay away from them, especially in low sack. And yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny when you're making turns with these super carriers, it is relatively, you get really, really slow. I believe I was, we were trying to play, what was it? We were making a Congo line in a pause once whenever I was in my Wyvern and I was moving at about 40 MS because I was trying to make a circle around the pause too small. Yes, we do have scouts out at the moment and uh, we have exit sinos in case shit hits the fan. Um, I don't understand the question. Covert ops, sino bubbles. Bubblers can't go through covert ops bridges. Yeah. Bubblers can't go through covops. Now, a covert hauler could go through and drop an anchorable bubble, but it takes it takes several it takes a while for it to uh, anchor. And the Titan could just kill it. That is correct. Titan would pretty much one shot those bubbles. Uh, you can see a sino on your overview when it when it's lit. You can you can't see a covert op sino, but to be honest, they're not really a threat to uh, supers and titans as bubblers can't come through black ops jump balls. Well, this is not good. Now the uh, 50 bombers that's coming through with it might be a problem. Now, yes. Like uh, someone just said, even a Bellator is considered a threat, I assume. That is very correct. Um, that's why, number one, all you guys are in shuttles, because of the fact you, that is the one ship that you can't put a Sino on besides your pod. Um, it's very common. I've, I've seen it happen that people um, get complacent, seeing an, oh, it's this noob ship, and then Sino goes up and you see a dead super carrier on the killboard the next morning. So a lot of times, yes, we, you know, we watch those and are ready to bug out. Yep, Sino Badger, almost anything can fit a Sino, and every time we're moving them around, uh, I've seen super carrier pilots, which I don't know why, but they flip out as soon as they see, even in a large-scale fleet, they will flip out when um, they see a fleet incoming or a ship uncloak, even in Sino Jam systems. It's kind of ridiculous. No glory. Pretty much the log off ski since it's changed. The only way to be able to save your super is number one. You well, you're just gonna have to win the fight. Either that, or we're gonna lose. Alliances are gonna lose a lot more um, supers. This is a good thing. Super oh how? Um, well, the log off how it's changing is instead of logging off and there being the 15 minute aggression counter, if someone is aggressing your ship, um, it will not disappear. It will not emergency warp if you're being warp disrupted. So pretty much if I would log off and you warp disrupted me with a hick, I would sit there. And the only way to save me is to come in and kill that ship. Um, and that's going to mean the only way to save pilots who have logged off is to bring in a subcat fleet to save you. Yes, you can sign out or sign out of a fight as long as you are not tackled. Um, logging on or losing connection and then trying to log back in Sometimes that works. It all depends. I have seen uh, many pilots actually lose their supercarrier because of that issue. Um, so if you don't have a good network connection, you don't want to be flying one of these bad boys. I've seen supercarrier pilots that got DC'd in a fleet, tried to relog to get back in, and their supercarrier got stuck and was just sitting on grid and died with them not in it. Or, well, they were technically in it, but not piloting it. Um, yes, I'm pretty sure that if you lo if you log off, you drop fleet, so therefore you don't have your fleet bonuses. And your modules will only stay active as long as you have cap. It's not like you can't keep boosting your cap booster or something like that. Your modules, once they go off, they're not on. So if you get capped out, and then even if you get cap transferred, your modules are off. Mm -hmm. Um... Your skills still affect the ship, uh, as long as, well, obviously, the pilot's in it. You won't get fleet bonuses, though. That rag's getting ready to bridge you. If you log off, you don't get fleet bonuses. But your skills still affect the ship. To be honest, if I'm getting primaried, I'll just overheat my hardeners, stay logged on, and just die with dignity. <clears throat> You're not in the way. The time would just push you out of the way. Man, I thought of something good, and I just completely forgot about it. Yes, that is rather fun to do, hot drop and jump freighters. But, um, oh, there it is. Cat management. Um, Super carriers love or have horrible cap recharge, especially the shield super carriers. It takes, they have massive cap on them, but it takes quite a long time for them to actually cap up. Um, 
you know, I have 93,000 um, capacitor in my capacitor, so it takes a very long time to cap up the <laughs> wyvern up top or the levy, Leviathan up top, will take about 35 minutes after jumping in the system to be a full cap to jump back out. Um, the Titan's not vulnerable because the center point of the Titan is the bit that the uh, the EVE server recognizes the bit that you need to lock. So you can only lock the actual bracket, and that's still inside the shield. You can bump its ass, but I'm pretty sure your defense squad will then pop you. Triage is. Do you know? Do you know what siege mode is for Dreadnought? It pretty much it's a where the ship can't move and it gives a massive amount of DPS uh, bonus to the ship. The, the triage modules the same thing for a carrier that gives it a mass a massive rep bonus to allow it to rep more and uh, faster and lock quicker. It also increases the tank of the ship. Yeah, it's uh, it's reppers do twice as much repping and cycle twice as fast. So it's essentially four times better than out of triage. Same with your personal, your local reppers. They cycle uh, half the time and rep twice as much. You can tighten bridge with aggression timer, yeah. The negative is you can't move. <laughs> Yeah. And no one else can rep you. So you, if um, if you run out of cap, you're out of cap. You can't have someone cap transfer you to cap you up. But to be honest, if you jump a bunch of uh, triage in um, to save your super or titan, the price of a triage carrier is about 900 million. Compared to the price of the super that you're trying to save, it's well worth it. Yeah, the, up, the upcoming changes to the dreads are going to make uh, a lot... It's going to mean a lot of more interesting things are going to happen in super capital fights, uh, making, especially with the time dilation, it's going to make dreads a lot more essential to take out faster. Yes, carriers would be considered the ultimate, the um, neutral, or oh shit, where was I? Yes, the Lodgy is the ultimate, and the, the triage carrier is the ultimate, more or less, for Lodgy characters, considering the fact in a 100-on-100 battleship fight, you can pretty much drop one triage carrier in, and it will save every single one of your battleships that they try to kill, and will most likely be able to tank a majority of the DPS um, for that fleet. If I remember... If I remember that fleet, Rich, um, as soon as you loaded grid, no battleship died. And yes, especially the new changes, they may be directly buffing dreads, but we're gonna see a lot of those changes, especially the time dilation, is really helping all the others, all the capitals in great effect with the time dilation, meaning modules are not gonna stop cycling. I've seen in the super capital engagement of Uamon, um, I saw a friendly Titan sit at, it was about 33% armor for about half an hour to 45 minutes just because of the massive amount of carrier reps that were on him. Now, over the course of time, those reps got so lagged out that they weren't actually cycling on the carrier and or the Titan, and he died. And then the next Titan, we weren't able to keep alive like that. But with time dilation now, that's not going to happen. So dreads will continue doing their damage, and carriers will continue repping. And that's where we've had it seen a majority of uh, modules lock up. 15-minute module lag. When I was in LXQ, it was more like 45. That's the worst I've seen. But when you have 3,500 people in one system, <laughs> you expect sort of lag. That's one thing in a large-scale alliance that you end up getting a little bit used to. You end up running a lot of large-scale fleet fights. Now, we may not, en all of us may not enjoy them all the time, um, but they definitely do happen, and at times they get very, very fun. Um, Gibbs, you've got some company coming in. Do you want to get these guys docked up or bridged out? Yep, let's go. Let's bridge out.